Good evening. Okay, we're going on handheld cam here, so this is AKA Seasick Cam. Cam. Um, this is a Gibson amplifier, and I have kind of a unique topic. This amp is not broken, so we're not actually going to tear it apart. I was thinking about tearing it apart, but I don't think that there's any point in tearing it apart at this time. So this is a GA5 circa 1962, three. And this one is the one in brown Tolex. This is more commonly seen in black Tolex. I think they only did them like this for about a year. And most of this is original. The only thing that is not original, or the only things, change the power cord to three prong. And the electrolytic capacitors have been updated to ones that don't leak like a sieve. Very simple amp. It has a volume, and it has a tremolo on-off switch, and the depth is set, and you can set the speed of it. And it's a very good sounding tremolo. There's a number of unique things about these amplifiers, but my biggest beef is about how people are getting these vintage 60, 60s era Gibson amps, and immediately tearing them apart, and modifying the circuit claiming that they suck. And I don't agree with that. Okay, so let's take a look inside. We have a relatively small power transformer, but it only has to go up to about 250 volts. And there's our rectifier, a little 6X4. And then we have a pair of 6AQ5s. Not 6BQ5s. If they were 6BQ5s, that would be like a EL84, like you'd find in a Vox. Output transformer. This is a push pull amp. And then our V1 and V2, which are our preamp tube and our tremolo tube, are 6EU7s. So, unique tube complement. Our speaker is the original stock speaker, Gibson Ultrasonic speaker, made, ex made expressively for Gibson. And it's an Alnico speaker. That's an original speaker. You don't find a lot of original speakers on these amps. A lot of them have been blown. And it's not that the speaker itself is really a problem. It's a good sounding speaker. Let's see if we see any codes on the speaker that might reveal something about it. Well, we hear children screaming upstairs. We do not see any marking codes on it other than our sticker here. If this sticker were removed, maybe there's a code underneath. But if it's not broke, I don't want to fix it. I actually have the original sheet owner's manual. It's a little rough, but you would be too, I suppose, if you were living in this amplifier for as long as it did. It basically just tells you how to plug it in and turn it on. But here's the thing that I think everybody does wrong on these amplifiers. We have a normal 68K input um, to our first 6EU7 and then we go through this resistor network. This resistor network, I don't know if this thing's going to focus or not. Let's try to zoom out and see if we can get it to focus. Our curiosity is this. There's this series. There's a pair of 220k resistors, a 0.0033 cap to ground, and a 500 cap puff cap over there. Now, sound going through a 500 puff cap is generally going to sound thin, and that's what people get mad about. They say, oh my gosh, these things sound grainy or thin or whatever, and then they quickly clip that resistor network out, resistor and cap network out, and replace it with something like a 0.2, um, or 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 cap, which is similar to what you'd find in a fender. That's okay, but everybody I've ever seen who does this are fender guitar players. Sorry, Brad, the guitologist. It's a shout out to you, you and your Telecaster. Uncle Doug, I think you got a PV, but I don't know. You always fix fender amps. Everybody who does this modification is used to fender amps, 
not used to Gibson amps. And that's not to be an insult or be mean. But think about the nature of this amplifier. What options do you have on the front? What can you control? You have a volume knob and a tremolo knob. That's it. You don't have any tone control. Now, back in these days, particularly even earlier in the 50s, these types of guitars were generally sold in kits where you got your guitar and your amplifier. Your Les Paul Jr. amplifier, there was a Les Paul amplifier, and they liked to sell them as sets. So, would it not make sense that this Gibson amplifier was designed to go with a Gibson guitar? Makes sense to me. So, if any of you own one of these, before you sit there and bitch about how the tone sucks, I challenge you to plug a Gibson guitar into it, and then, since there is no tone control on the amplifier, use the tone control on your guitar. On your humbucking pickup, it doesn't matter if it's the neck or the bridge, just take your tone knob and roll it back halfway. So you're dropping half of that grainy, brash treble. You will be amazed at how pretty these amplifiers sound. Right out of the box, with no modifications, they sound absolutely fantastic. Because of how bright the front end is on them, they sound really good with a reverb unit. You can put a reverb in front of them and they sound beautiful, sparkly, and open. These amps do not need this modification. This thing that people have been calling the tone-sucking circuit is not a tone-sucking circuit per se. It's a humbucker, it's a humbucker balance circuit. The other thing that used to happen in these eras, speakers were not 100 watts or 200 watts like they are now. It's hard to blow a modern eminent speaker. You have to be trying. These 1950s and 60s paper speakers were 10 watts, 15 watts, if you were lucky. You can ask anybody who had an old vintage bass amp how many speakers they went through. At one point, Fender was shipping additional speakers included with your 1950s amp. Where do I get this information? From a dealer that used to carry them. When you would order your amp, they would throw a few extra speakers and send them to the dealer already because they knew people were going to blow them for warranty. These speakers couldn't handle the large grand amount of bass that these amps would put through when you put a .02 cap in them. Just try to roll back your treble knob and play one of these. You'll be amazed at how beautiful it sounds. Um, I have some sound clips of this amplifier from four years ago or so when I was testing different types of reverbs. So if you'd like to hear what it sounds like, you can go back to that. It's also just as crappily shot as a video of this as this is, but uh, this thing that I have had people tell me again and again and again and again is a tone-sucking circuit. It is not a tone-sucking circuit. It actually makes me very angry. And they constantly keep saying, what was Gibson thinking? What was Gibson thinking? Well, I took a few minutes to try to figure out what Gibson was thinking. And Gibson was trying to make an amplifier that agrees well and gives a wide open tone with a humbucker pickup. Try getting sparkle out of your typical humbucker on many guitar amps. They won't. They just don't sparkle with humbuckers. So people go back to their single coils and say, humbuckers sound muddy. Well, I disagree with you. And I've kicked around the idea of building a reproduction of this amplifier uh, verbatim of this circuit. Because I like the sound of it very, very much, but I'm concerned about the speaker and the health of the transformers um, being played at high volumes and getting carted around. So I'd like just to repro this and have an amp that I can experiment with a little bit and not worry about affecting something in this good of condition that is this old. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. But uh, if you'd like to check out some of the videos of this amplifier, I used it when I demonstrated the three reverbs. They're probably some of the oldest videos on my channel. You can go back and check them out. But if you have one of these vintage Gibson amps, by all means, you don't need to necessarily tear into it. Use that tone knob. That's why they were put on your guitar. And yeah, this sounds fine with single coils too. 
you want to talk about the most possible the most shrill possible sounds you could come up with try plugging a Rickenbacker into one of these but if you roll the tone knob back it sounds wonderful and it sounds warm and there's a totally acceptable amount of bass for a 10 inch speaker I think we've all gotten spoiled with tone knobs on our amps and we just turn our tone knob on our guitar wide open and then expect to fix all the tone on our amp side this is actually a good design amp and I'm not going to modify the audio portion of it anyway. Have a great day.